Okay, hi, welcome to your Paxton tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to add some users on the Net2 software. So first of all, you want to open up your software. It might be a shortcut on your desktop. Normally, I keep it down here where it's nice and slick. So open up your software like so. And you want to enter in your password if you have one. I don't have a password set to my software, but uh, you want to enter in your password. So this is the software. I'm using the Lite software just for demonstration purposes. Before we add any users, what you want to make sure on your system is that your doors are online. So if you click doors up here on the top left, and it will bring a list of all of your doors. I've only got one door. I've labeled it up as main entrance and it's got a green tick. This means that my computer is physically communicating to that door. Any doors that have red X's on them, it means that it's not communicating. If you've got that problem, I suggest you call your installer or whoever's doing your maintenance contract and ask them about it. If you've got red X's next to any doors, they won't take on the changes that you're going to make, okay? But we've got a, a green tick, which means we're good to go. So if we go to our users menu on the left here, and that will bring up our users section here. And at the minute, I've got one department called SIS Security. With this area, I suggest you have lots of departments. Unless you're a very small site with only a few users, it doesn't matter. But if you're a big building, it's easier if you have lots of departments. So to add a new department, you go down to the bottom here on the left, and you press Add New Department. In the top here, you just want to add your departments. So you might have cleaners, uh, management, um, and whatever you like. Um, that'll do for now. Anyway, so we've got cleaners and management. Okay, now you want to hit apply in the bottom right and press OK. And then if you hit refresh here, that'll bring it and refresh the screen. Okay, now we want to add a user. You can click into these areas into the departments and add them, but it's best just get a blank fob, put it on your desktop reader, and that will bring up a blank profile like so. And now you want to add all of the, the credentials that you want to add. So for instance, I'm going to do myself, or we'll, we'll do it as a test, and we'll put middle name one, and the department, we'll put it down as SIS security, and we'll put it down as, yeah, you want to do your access levels, so I'm going to do all hours, all doors. You might have various different access levels and different time zones, and we'll get into that into another video, but just click the correct access level. For this demonstration, we're going to do all hours, all doors. It's going to give me full access. Um, and then you've got other options here that you can add if you need. Telephone, fax, uh, a valid from date, and a, an expiry date. You can make the token expire if you like. Um, you've got address, picture, and it goes on. So you add whatever you like. And here on the bottom right, you can hear, see the token number, and that's the physical number of my token, my fold. Okay, once that's done, press add user, and that's done. Okay, and then if you wanted to add another one, you could put another blank fold on now, and then carry on. So that's working. You can test that now by going to your events, um, just because my reader's right in front of me, I'm going to do it here, but you could physically walk over to your door and hit the fob on the system, and there you go. There I am, walking in the door, main entrance in. Okay? And it's as simple as that. With your fobs as well, if you go back to users and go to SIS security, and there I am, test one. Okay, right, so here you can see my profile. Now I've got access level permissions, all hours, all doors. Here would be a list of all the doors that you've got access to. Um, you can set temporary access levels, but I wouldn't go into this. And you've got tokens. Now if you click on tokens, this is the physical token here. This is the card that we just programmed on. So if you want to delete that, all you have to do is press delete, right? But what I suggest you do is not delete a fob. If somebody loses a fob, don't delete it. Because if they delete it and they find it the next day and they say, hey, I found my fob, I'm just going to carry on using it, you've got to get that fob off them, then you've got to program it on the system again. So what I suggest you do is do lost token, press yes, 
and then hit apply. Now that token is lost. Uh, so if you genuinely lost it and somebody picks it up, it's not going to work. If I try it now, and you'll see, there you go. Test one, access denied. Token not valid, okay? So then if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I found my token and I want to make it work again on the system, you know? You go, okay, great. You don't need the fob. You don't even need them. They could do it over the phone, you know? And you find that person, go to their profile in users on the left, go into users, click in the correct department, find the person in question, then you've got their profile up. Then you press tokens in the middle, and there's the token that you marked as lost. And then all you do is press found token and press yes. And that's it. And then apply. Don't forget to hit apply here at the bottom, and then that will work again. Uh, if you wanted to reassign this fob to another user now, because you might have already assigned them a new fob, you will have to delete it and reprogram it in the system from scratch. But uh, if you haven't, then there you go. You're back to square one. Okay, and then if I go to events, uh, that will, will now work. Okay, all right, and that's it. That's how to add a user and remove a user. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks a lot.